I've been doing YouTube for six years now. I think going on seven years, two years full time. Um, I'm just gonna try to give you like the power tips. Where to start is very similar to affiliate marketing, okay? You need to start with a true passion, so something that you would literally do for free because you will be doing it for free for probably six to eight months to a year. You're gonna be doing this completely for free. That's, that's something you're knowledgeable in. And again, it's your true passion. So my twin brother, I'm helping him with this channel. Go subscribe if you're interested in anything EV, Tesla, et cetera. We got him to 5,000 subscribers in just, let's go to his oldest video in a year. Can you imagine that? From going to zero to 5,000 subscribers in a year, and he's making hundreds of dollars a month as a side hustle, and he's just, just getting started. Number two, getting started, it's branding. Before you even start, you have to have tight branding. What do I mean by that? So the name, Your Driver Mike, the way I started with branding is before I even started the channel, I was visualizing the branding. I went to this website, namecheck.com, and I checked if the name was available. So what I did is I checked Your Driver Mike first before even starting, and I made sure this is all available. The, the Facebook was available, the YouTube, the Twitter, the TikTok, well, they, they didn't have TikTok, I don't know. But I checked first to make sure they're available. That's what you wanna do, why? Because if you don't, you're gonna have like your driver mic, and then your driver mic official, and then your driver mic TikTok, and, and the names aren't cohesive. And there is even big name celebrities and creators that do that because they don't have the domains, they don't have the usernames for all of these platforms. It's so much cleaner when I can say, hey, go to your driver mic across socials, and that is it. I hear people say, go to your driver mic on YouTube, go to your driver mic official on Twitter, go to, your, you know, and it's so, it's so muddy comparing to have the branding cohesive. So do that, go to name check, check first. Mastering YouTube, it's the mini course, it's a PDF download, it's only 49 bucks. I'm gonna teach you a lot of this about branding, how to set up the YouTube thing and all of that, okay? It's on yourdrivermic.com, it's under resources, uh, mastering YouTube, it's a PDF download that I just put, it's nothing fancy, okay? I don't have a fancy PDF, but the info's there if you want uh, to learn more of what I'm telling you about. When it comes to branding, after I had my name, then I decided on the colors that I'm gonna use. Every single major company has brand guidelines. This is Walmart's right here. This is a PDF that goes over exactly how you're gonna use their brand. This is old, okay? But you, you can find their new one. It talks about everything of the voice and the tone, the design elements of their brand, how to use the logos. Okay, I wanna show you colors. Brand architecture, typography, which fonts to use. Here's the colors. Which colors are Walmart's official colors? It's right here. Isn't that fascinating? It's right here. So you need to decide what are my brand colors. And you can see the, um, they don't just do that, they do the proportion of colors. So we're gonna primarily use this blue. We use a little bit of, of neon pink to emphasize certain things. We use white. And then it goes super deep. It says like, you know, colors, blah, blah, blah. This is a huge conglomerate, right? We're not gonna do that for you. But what you at least wanna do is have a general idea of branding. So let's go back to me when it comes to the colorway. You'll notice for my branding, look at the colorways. So DoorDash has all the same background colors. I'm, I'm creating a brand within DoorDash to identify it's my content and it's for DoorDash. Amazon uh, Flex, I have the same kind of oranges in here. I have the, the vest now uh, to uh, visualize it's Amazon. Walmart, look at this, all the same, the blues, their logo with the, um, the shirt. So when you're making content on YouTube, you need to keep the viewer watching. No fluff at the beginning, okay? No one cares. No one cares. Never start with, hey, welcome back to my channel. Don't start with a fancy intro with colors. And I used to do that. That was a mistake. Okay. What you want to do is immediately deliver value and or set a hook what it's called in your intro. So if I said how to make $10,000 a month on YouTube, I might reiterate that firstly. In this video, 
I'm going to give you five powerful must know tips that have allowed me to make over $10,000 every single month as a content creator. Let's get into it. Boom. So I set the hook. I confirmed what you saw in the thumbnail and I said, must know. I said powerful and I said must know. So it's like, well, must know. I better stay for this. And I didn't say, hi, this is, this is welcome back. What I do here, you know, I don't do anything. I used to make some of these mistakes, but I'm helping you out now. I'm accelerating this. Once you get into the content, start delivering value. You, you can add a little credence, a little credibility after you've set the hook and say, hey, if this is the first time that you and I are meeting, my name is Mike, I've been doing YouTube for six years, 1,000 videos, and I made $10,000 plus in the la and every month in the last eight months right here on YouTube. So then someone knows, well, this is someone I should listen to because they've actually done it. And you can put a little graphic if you want you know, to pop up. We can't get into all that now. So you, you set the hook and then immediately deliver value. Let's say the baker example, right? How to make the best chocolate chip cookies. Tip number one, stop buying cheap ingredients. So the creator would jump immediately in, none of the fluff giving um, the, the tip there. So you go through the tip and then you can say things like, I used to use Kroger brand chocolate chips, but here's a secret that gets someone to lean in. Like, whoa, like what? Like, like a secret? Like I gotta, I gotta I gotta listen to this next point. The secret is I actually switched them out for a blah, blah, blah. It's a much better chip and melts much more evenly, whatever it is. Tip number two. So right, we're getting into the into the, uh, the value there. Tip number three is to have pattern interrupts. That's what it's called. So if I did this, listen to this. Okay, I just did something with the music and you're like, whoa, what, what was that for? Or if I say, now this next point, you're really gonna wanna listen to. So don't leave this video just now. Or let's say, now this next point, most people miss this, so listen to this. So right, and you'll see this in analytics, right when people start to get bored, that's when you wanna grab them back in. Hey, by the way, before you leave, this next point is massive. And I do this in my videos, at least I try to. Next tip, story arcs. Story arcs are massive. Some of the biggest creators are the best at telling stories. As I bump my mic, this is something that I'm really trying to focus on, focus on now. So when I do my ride alongs, it's a story of a journey. I'll say, listen, folks, we're driving for GoPuff. I did really well last time. And I did this in my last video. I said, I made $30 an hour plus. Do you think we're going to make that today? And is GoPuff the hottest app of 2022? And then, I, and if you listen to a video, I had some of those reattachment messages. I said, hey, hang with me. You and I are gonna go over the, uh, the numbers at the end of the video. So that's what we're doing. We're re-engaging. End your videos quickly is the next tip. Don't say, hey guys, I hope you liked this video. I try to upload every week or so. Sorry if I miss sometimes, but uh, definitely subscribe. And like, I know I do some of that, but I try to keep it as short as possible. And what you can also do is hand them off to another video. Say, hey, by the way, if you liked this video on GoPuff, I have a whole playlist right here talking about GoPuff. You're going to want to watch that next, which is handing them off to another video. The length of the video, keep it at 10 minutes. Why 10 minutes? Well, 10 minutes, Scott, thanks for asking, used to be the barometer to get more ads. I'll tie with this. You get paid on YouTube with ad impressions. So every time you're shown an ad, I get paid what's called, there's a CPM and an RPM, the cost per thousand views, the cost per mil versus the RPM, the revenue per mil, how much I take home. That's gonna vary based on industry. If I'm a kid's channel or a prank channel, I'm not gonna make as much as education, which is what I do, finance, uh, and then below that is like consumer goods and stuff like that. So the niche determines a lot of that CPM. So think about that as well. Education, finance, and that kind of education stuff pays more than entertainment, pranks, and even beauty. So keep that in mind. The more ads, the more money you'll make. Now, you can manually set ads at 10 minutes or longer. That used to be the barometer. Now it's eight minutes. So let's say, Scott, I mean, do I have to keep it at eight minutes to get additional ads? My last point is videos need to be as short as possible, but as long as needed. Like, folks, there, there's times where I'll just like cut out two minutes of my video because it's too much. It's I, I know you're not going to watch 13 minutes. So I, I just cut, I cut, I cut. So I'm trying to make eight to like 12 minute videos now, because yes, I can manually place more ads in videos that are longer than eight minutes. That's a good business strategy. 
because more ads, more pay. There's so much knowledge. We, we didn't even go into thumbnails. We didn't go into titling. We didn't go into um, equipment. This is a, a $1,200 audio set. We didn't go into any of that. So if you want to learn more about how to be a YouTube content creator, subscribe and look for that course, Mastering YouTube.